Ollie was born in western Nebraska on August 10, 1928. She was institutionalized in 1951 at age 23, shortly after giving birth to a baby girl. She was sterilized at the institution. In 1956, Ollie was given the Wexler Bellevue Intelligence Scale. Her IQ was placed at 67, full scale. Following a 10-year stay in the institution, Ollie was placed in a care home in Omaha. She has lived independently since 1972 and held a variety of jobs. During this time, Ollie was married and divorced. She is currently retired, but is very active in the self-advocacy movement. Ollie lives in her own home where she rents rooms to two other people. Ollie's team members currently include herself, her service coordinator, Nancy, her advocate, Janet, and her friend, Dina. There is a psychological report done, and it was done in 1956. And in that report, it states that Ollie would never be able to live on her own, would never be able to uh, take care of herself or anyone else, um, that she didn't have the skills to have a home. And I tell people now that she held a job for 17 years in the community. She has her own home that was built for her. She has learned to do all of the housekeeping skills, um, cooking, the cleaning, the laundry. And besides that, she also has two individuals who are living with her that she makes meals for, she takes care of. Um, so things that took place clear back in the 50s, you know, and putting limits on people, she has proven, and, and a lot of this is through her own, her own self-advocacy. It's advocating for herself, saying, yes, I can do this, and I can prove you wrong. And uh, one of her favorite sayings is, if you make up your cotton pick in mind, you can do anything. And that pretty well sums up who Ollie is, because she makes up her mind to do something, and she follows through. And that's her whole life. I, my life, be built up happy. You see me till today, you see me be the same old Ollie today. You know that. You don't know now, baby. You never know. <laughs> yes, it's my own home. Paying the house with and everything else. My house went, went up and everything. And I'm, I'm pitching my pennies and stuff like that. And you take care of the house, or do you have to yeah, take care of the house? Yeah, I, 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 I don't do, I, well, yeah, I take care of the house myself, me and, and Joyce sometimes will help me and everything, if I can get her to help me. Uh, some of Ollie's limitations come from her independent living skills. Um, and some of that may be what we see as limitations for her versus what she sees as her own limitations. Uh, it may come back to a little bit about her housekeeping skills. Some of us may say to her, in Ollie, you have people coming, you might want to straighten up your living room, where she sees that as, hey, it's my living room, and this is my house, and I'm going to, which is a strength and a weakness, or a, a limitation. So um, some of those limitations may be what we see, and not what Ollie sees as her own. Um, as far as budgeting, we, we work through that together and I explain on a monthly basis what we need to do to keep things in control. Okay, Ollie, take a look at the old checkbook and see how you're doing. I'm just doing this fine. It's just, yes, I ain't got no money in the bank. <laughs> None of us do. Good. She, um, uh, you recorded everything perfectly? Uh-huh. Check numbers, date, amount, that's very good. I try to be a little more careful and fill in who you write them to. Okay. I know most of them go to Baker's. Then in your mail, this statement is how much that you took in in the way of rent and the way of food yeah. for Howard and Joyce. Yep. Okay. That's on the plus side. 
and this is your um, insurance bill for your house, yeah. and you pay that automatically out of your bank account uh -huh. with the help of that government loan. Uh -huh. Okay, and then did you take care of MUD? Yes, you just got Not that yet. One. Okay. You Not yet. I had great time get money in the bank. Okay. Then we'll put money in the bank tomorrow um, on the way down to dropping you off to go to the convention. It, it went down, thank goodness. Right. That was a good break for you. <laughs> you ain't whooping, babe. And then, okay, we've got, what, a doctor appointment next week with Dr. Stern for a checkup. And then... I mean, it's a new year, you remember? Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> a new year. A right, new year. And then, let's see, what else? Oh. You, you, my eyes. Yeah. And then uh, we've got to get you up to church for that monthly meeting with your, your volunteer yeah. work. And with Pete, see what else? I'm a Pedal and Chuck. Yeah. And I'll give you a ride up to Friendship Club today so you can get to work. Okay? Okay. Is there anything else you need done? That's it. I don't know what else to do and everything. I got everything in good hands and everything. Yep, yeah, you do a good job. Her biggest limitation is health. And um, Ollie is, has an obesity problem. Um, she's trying to work on it, but it's very difficult for her. And she is also a chain smoker. Uh, we've done everything we can, and the doctors encouraged her to stop the smoking and, and better diet and get more exercise. But Ollie has to make her own mind up, and you know, at this point, she's just not ready for that. She serves in a, in a volunteer program for senior citizens with disabilities. And that's how she became involved in the friendship program. Um, Ollie just loves people. She loves to help. She has a heart of gold. Uh, her knowledge of community resources is incredible. She knows who to call, when to call, um, how to get there, different modes of transportation she has access to, uh, people she can call for help. Um, Ollie is a very strong self-advocate. Ollie when she knows she wants something, will do everything in her power to get it. That's, that's probably her biggest strength. She, she will then try and contact everybody she knows and try and solve a problem by herself. Right now she is taking classes and is learning how to read and write. So that's now becoming one of her strengths that she is um, up applying to her life. She as a self-advocate, speaking out for herself, that's great, but many times she is very stubborn and won't listen to advice that other individuals might give to her. Um, you might say, you know, gee, Ollie, if you would do this, um, it would make it a little easier, and she sometimes tends to ignore that and go her own way. Um, very often, uh, if someone is giving advice, she sees it as them trying to tell her what to do. And so she'll, she'll totally ignore what they're saying and uh, try and make up her own mind on what she'll do. And sometimes she'll have to come back and apologize and say, I should have listened to you and, and, and all of that. But more strengths than anything else, she's, I think, in her whole life. Ollie is involved with Project 2, and Project 2 is a self-advocacy program that teaches individuals with disabilities how to advocate for themselves. She has been involved with uh, Project 2 since 1975 in various different ways. Uh, she's been president, uh, vice president, past presidents, uh, just has always been a leader of the program. Um, Project 2 has, I have personally been involved with Ollie through Project 2 since, for about 12 years as their advisor. Um, they meet every Friday night here locally, doing various different things in anywhere from a issue and topic night that uh, discusses things that will assist them through their own lives to social and recreational activities which can be dinners, parties, dances, um, that will give them the opportunity to be involved. 
some of Ollie's biggest supports are members of Project 2 who have been with her since the organization, since Project 2 has started. Um, she will call up individuals. She's, there's one individual she plays cards with, and he, they're, they're just best friends. They tease each other. He's always there. Her daughter, Nancy, is uh, just a big support of hers. She has um, her service coordinator who uh, supports her in some limit, you know, some limited support. Um, is usually there when she has a big problem. Ollie has been involved in the self-advocacy since 1975. She has very popular as a speaker, has traveled across the United States. She has talked in um, various different capacities with different people on self-advocacy. She, um, she usually did it with another person, um, and she usually had a, an individual there that would ask her questions. She has also been to England and at an uh, international self-advocacy conference and discussed her life um, and how self-advocacy has assisted her in her life. In some cases, Ollie has had standing ovations when she has, been, when she has finished talking um, her, her speeches. She also has a new person in her life who goes grocery shopping with her and um, helps her as far as making menus and making uh, nutritious menus and then going grocery shopping with her and her name is Margaret. Good. 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 That was really good. Since May I've been helping Ollie get groceries and we meet like maybe once a week or sometimes um, twice a um, twice a month. It just depends. Ollie has a busy schedule and I have a busy schedule and so it's the good thing about this is um, it doesn't have to be like say every Tuesday we're flexible and work with each other and then sometimes if I if we haven't gone for a while she'll call me and she's like I need groceries right? When we plan a menu um, I'm always trying to have Ollie eat more vegetables and fruits, and of course, Ollie loves fruit. That's not a problem, but it's the vegetables we have a problem with. I try to have her eat more lettuce salads, but um, she also has two other people that live here in the house, and so she has to prepare meals for them, and so it's hard to make a meal that they like also. And um, that's what Ollie always complains about. She always says that Howard and Joyce won't eat those vegetables, and so she's got to kind of somehow camouflage them in her um, meal planning and making meals. She's kind of like everyone else is on this fast-paced scale of living and doesn't have time to make a lot of meals. Like she'll say, um, tonight I want to make something fast or I'll have soup, a can of soup, because she doesn't have time like everyone else is, you know, we're so busy on the go. Sometimes the people said handicaps can't do anything, but I saw them, and I saw them do it a dozen times. Them said I can't take my care of myself, and I can't take care of people. Why well, think I'm doing my own to serve today? Ollie reflects the multidimensionality of mental retardation. Although she is a person with mental disabilities, she has strengths and limitations in each of the four dimensions and is currently receiving ongoing supports in the areas of home living and financial assistance. Thus, Ollie is an example of the intended outcome of the 1992 AAMR definition, classification, and system of supports, full community integration. The supports that Ollie receives aren't pulled off the shelf. Activities and levels of intensity are tailored to fit her individual needs. 
taking into account all that is going on in her life at that specific point in time. The outcomes for Ollie, Joseph, Joe, Mackenzie, David, and other individuals with mental retardation represent not only a new way of thinking, they are actually transforming our vision of the possibilities open to people with mental retardation.